Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, The Lincoln Addict. And I want to hit you guys with another video talking about another super important thing that applies to the 60s Lincolns. I would even say possibly the 58 through 60 as well. I'd have to have someone confirm that. But I've had people chime in as well and said this applies, to, uh, this happened to them in their like Ford Galaxy. So it also could apply to other Ford Motor Company vehicles in that 60 era, late 50s into the 60s. But um, if you've ever been in your car and let's say you're backing up, okay, well, let me start over. If you have ever heard me or other people mention, do not leave your car in idle, okay, you got to take heed to that, okay? There is definitely something that can happen, and it's happened before, okay? Cars have gotten messed up. Hopefully, nobody's ever gotten hurt over this. Someone could. But basically, we always talk about never start your 60s Lincoln, leave it in idle, and get out of the car. Do not do it. I've seen videos on YouTube where people are like, hey, check out my car, whether they just bought it or they've had it for years, and, you know, the car's idling, and they're walking around doing a video, okay? Okay? I try to comment very nicely and say, hey, nice car. Please take heed and understand that these cars can and will jump into gear, which basically is reverse. So when you get in your car and, you know, you go to put it, let's say you're going to back out, you know, that reverses your first gear that you're going to go to, right? Um, I'm going to show you photos right now on why that happens. I'm going to put a link a description a link to Nathan Wilson. He's done a video or two about the subject, including um, showing multiple steering columns side by side. I'm going to show you what we did on my 64. And hopefully this visual will reinforce to you that you've got to remedy this issue. Now, I need to take care of it on my 65. Tony and I are going to rebuild the column on my 65 red car. Um, but if nothing else, do not ever leave your car idling and get out of it, okay? The best thing I, or the, the best advice I give people, um, leave your foot on the brake at all times until you obviously need to move the car and you're going to drive. So if I get in my car, I have my foot on the brake, I start the car, I let it idle, you know, I give it a little bit of fuel, I let it kind of warm up, so to speak. And then I exit out of the, I turn the car off before I ever exit out of the car. Okay, that's important. Um, if I need to change, you know, shut my garage door, uh, I'll either turn the car off or if my wife's in the car, I'll say, hey, can you put your foot on the brake? And she'll put her leg over there and boom, foot's on the brake. Okay, it's that serious. Um, unless something, you know, like, you know, there was an immediate, um, issue. I, I can't think of anything where I would tell someone just leave it idling. Now, maybe I can think of one. I had an example recently where I did a video and my, my starter solenoid was bad. So I cranked the car and I could not turn the car off. I turned the key off and the car continued running. Okay. The starter was staying engaged and the solenoid was bad. I didn't have anybody else with me. Okay. Um, that, that rare circumstance, so I'm going to give you an example I just thought of, that rare circumstance, I had to pop the hood, foot's on the brake, fling the door open, run around the front of the car, push the lever, pop the hood open, and pull one of the two plugs, I think I pulled them both, on the solenoid. Um, that was super quick, and again, that's the only time I can think of where I've ever exited the vehicle and left the car idling, Okay extenuating circumstance, but there's an example for you. So let's jump right in here. Uh, before we do, I want to remind everyone, please, if you can visit lincolnatic.com, show some love. We've got uh, the white, the blue, and technically I only have black available. Um, I had a couple uh, red shirts made, kind of one-off shirts, but I'm going to update that image. There's only black available. Uh, they'll be shipping hopefully in the next two weeks. Um, my, my, the company I use graphic disorder after the presale ends and I tally the numbers and send it all up, it takes a couple weeks to print, but once they start on their way to me, I'll blast out an email to let everyone know, Hey, they're on their way to me. And then of course, once I get them, I'll get them bagged up and shipped out. And then you get a tracking number from the big cartel site. So let's jump right in. 
All right, so here we are back in my photos, and this is the first photo I want to show you. I took this one. I think it came from Blair Farmer or Teresa, uh, and she said years and years ago at Lincoln Land they had a car that uh, this this was there, and our understanding was it was part of that fatal issue of someone leaving the car idling, the car jumping into reverse. Okay, so – that's a warning for public service announcement for everyone. This is my 65 Lincoln Continental, all right? Or excuse me, this is my 64 Lincoln Continental convertible. What I want to show you guys is this is not the original bumper. These bumper ends were not the original bumper ends. When I bought this car, the bumper had been removed. They could not um, – the bumper came with it in the floorboard of the back seat. It needed to be rechromed badly, and the bumper ends they could not find. They later located. So this was off of a 65 Lincoln Continental. Uh, th this entire setup was, um, except for these bumper inserts, okay? So the reason why I want to show you this is if you look right here, and the way I'm doing this, it may not – yeah, with the with the screen thing I'm doing, it's not going to let me zoom in. There is a dent or kind of ding here. Uh, there's kind of one here. You can see where this bumper is tweaked, okay? So I've talked about this in my different videos I've done of eBay and bring a trailer listings, okay? When you're looking at one of these cars, these 60s cars, you always want to look at this bumper. I know John Lyman, when I was up there at Stinkin' Lincoln, you know, we've talked about this subject a couple times as well. This will be a tell if the car has ever jumped into reverse. And I know some of you guys have seen uh, Lincoln's where you will see, usually I've seen it over here, a big dent, okay? And normally it doesn't look too bad, um, but you can tell clearly something's happened there. The reason why I say that is if the car jumps in the reverse, it's bad news because if someone's standing behind it, it's going to mow them down. If someone's standing be between, like, let's say a curb and a wall, um, you know, it could pin them against the wall. Like, any scenario is possible, but... It real the damage to the vehicle really depends on what's behind it. You know, is there a uh, a pole, right? Is there a brick wall, whatever? Um, you know, hopefully not a person. But I'm telling you, this bumper right here, we could tell like this thing. I hated seeing photos from the rear of the car when I had this temporary bumper. Uh, one, I was waiting for the bumper that came with the car to get rechromed uh, through advanced plating. Uh, they had a fire and they were you know, rebuilding their business. So my bumper was shipped to them after the fire and I was waiting. So I had this bumper on there for a long time. And like I said, other photos um, would reveal, you just see it and it just looked a little mangled. It wasn't a clean bumper. So that's one thing that will happen to the car um, once it jumps into reverse. Okay. And here's one other photo, I think from the same day. And you can see right in here, dent, uh, tweaked and tweaked. And it just clearly is not... Um, it's just not good. Uh, so, yeah. Um, one other uh, thing is I do sell these bumper inserts for 64 and 65. These 64, these are some of the worst I'd ever seen. These have a grid pattern on them, and I sell a sticker kit separately if you want the sticker kits. Um, I got to get those loaded over on Lincoln Addict right now. They're on my other website, which is ourlifestylepodcast.com. The 65s have the grooves machined into them, and then you can have a pinstriper or yourself. You could go back and paint the little black lines, but I wanted to kind of throw that out there. All right, so here's the main purpose of this video. In my 64 Lincoln Continental, Tony and I rebuilt the steering column. All right, Tony has done this several times. He kind of could do it with a blindfold on. I say we did it because I took out the steering column uh, back in 2019 in September um, while he was you know, out doing some things he was doing for his business, and um, I assisted and aided with the process. Now, I think the person that really spearheaded this was Nathan Wilson and kind of finding the solution. So let's start here. This is a column out of a 67 Lincoln Continental, the 67 that I owned. This column I no longer own, but you, what you can see right here is this steering shaft. You, do you see all the room right here? Okay. The, you could pick that shaft up and you could just literally start banging that thing around. That's not the way it came factory. All right. Um, there is a little cone you can kind of see here that kind of comes down here. And to be honest with you, I don't know from the factory if what was there, okay? I assume 
it's it's this and, and by the way this is on backwards i was doing when i took this photo this day um i i did this you know to kind of just get a photo and showing it um i took this photo back in 2017 but what my assumption is it had some sort of rubber type deal like this from the factory so we'll, we'll look at that in a second but basically if you've ever been in your car like i said at the beginning and you're reversing where i have to kind of come up over i got a decent little um drainage curb when i when i come into my driveway and if i have my car in reverse and i kind of give it some fuel and i go over that hump the the shifter moves into i forget if it's a neutral but i mean it it move it moves okay and then the car is not going to move now because it's not in you know reverse that is a clear indication um, that you need to have your steering column rebuilt. The other, the other factor is if you ever have to wiggle the steering column a little bit, uh, to maybe get it to seat where it's not, um, the neutral safety switch isn't, you know, seeing the cars in neutral, that's an indication. But I can tell you, most of, you know, if you drive your Lincoln and you know, your steering column's pretty loose, all of these cars eventually, if not already now, they're eventually going to run into needing to be rebuilt. Now you could uh, l- let's look at what the fix is. Um, you could you could say, well, look, I don't need to take my steering column out. Listen, I'm telling you, the area between the steering column, the rag joint, and your steering box in there, it is tight. Okay, um, if you can do it without taking the steering column out, fantastic. All right, I would never recommend that to anyone. Taking the steering column out isn't as hard as you would think. The hardest part probably is taking the lower dash piece off um, in, in, inside the car. We'll look at that in a second. Again, this right here, Bohm tells you there is nothing there and there's way too much play, so to speak, um, in the steering column, you know, uh, clicking through the gears. All right. This is what the usual suspects, we call them that. I think that goes back to the Lincoln forums. This little deal here, you can buy. And um, when it's flipped around the other way, what's supposed to happen, this little groove is supposed to kind of go in between, you know, this area right here. And what this is supposed to basically do is kind of keep this in um, in the center, right? Nathan Wilson has found a better solution, and we'll look at that now. And this, is, again, is the replacement part that you can buy. Now, this is in the 67. I attempted to start doing this one day, and, and I think this was the little bit – the coupler was the little bit wrong – it was a, it was a hair too big, okay? But this is the premise, and you're going to see this, what we ended up doing on the 64. What you end up doing – and Nathan Wilson, again, has talked about this in the past, Driving Dreams Restorations. You buy this coupler, and this coupler, you have to grease it a lot – and you get the right size coupler, and what it will do is it's the same diameter as this tube, right? This factory tube. And essentially, the Reader's Digest version of this is you tap this in, okay? And when you tap this in, there is a set screw. And if I remember correctly, we put the set screw in not super tight. We kind of just put the set screw back in. And when you grease this up and you tap this in, this right here is now going to ensure that there's no play in that steering shaft, okay? You can pick this coupler up at um, your local, we have them now all over Florida, tractor supplies. Uh, You can go in there and you can buy this. I'm sure you can buy it at other places, but when you get the right size coupler, which I'll have to put, I'll have to find out exactly what the right one is and put it in the description, you get the coupler and you basically rebuild, you know, it's a rebuilding process of the steering column, okay? And again, here you can see a photo. And this piece right here, it doesn't even matter if you cut this out or you rip it out or you leave it and push it back up in there. This does nothing at this point. Okay, so in my 64 Lincoln Continental, this is back in September 2019, I took out the steering column. You do want to have the lower dash removed. The hardest part really is there's a couple of the bigger bolts that go up like any typical old car. You have those couple. Uh, There's usually one on each side here. There might be a couple other things you got to take apart, and then that's going to want to fall down. It was a lot easier than I thought. Of course, on the other side, you have to have the rag joint um, disconnected and so on. 
when you're going to take the steering column out, you might as well go through and do some other things. I won't go into a lot of detail here, but basically what we did is we kind of cleaned a lot of things up. And th this is the bulb. Um, if you're doing the LED upgrade of all of your dash bulbs, this is the one for the steering column. And of course, it illuminates up here on your gear shift uh, selector. Okay. This is just kind of showing a lot of this was self-explanatory, um, you know, taking out these three screws to kind of take this further apart. And uh, if you're not one to want to, you know, do all this, you can either buy another steering column uh, for your car or take yours out and you can get in contact with Tony Bolin. Uh, he's, of course, on Suicide Slabs. He's on Lincoln Addict, and he's on Instagram at, at, at Boss, B-O-S-S, -S, Bolin. You can message him, and, and he'll rebuild a column. He might even have some in stock that he can rebuild. Um, but what he ended up doing was he kind of just went through um, with me, and we took all this apart, and we greased what needed to be greased. We cleaned what needed to be cleaned. We changed this bulb because I was in the process of upgrading all of the bulbs. And uh, you'll sometimes see, like, if these pieces of plastic are broken, that's um, if you've got your turn signal on. Um, you know, if you've been around cars at all, you kind of know these old little things will break over time. But that's when you push your um, the turn signal left or right, and it kind of clicks. And, you know, the newer cars, uh, when you turn and it turns to a certain point, then that unclicks, and then you're um, – even in the older cars, you know, th then you're basically your turn signal clicks off. Here you could just see how much crap was in here, all the, the brittle old uh, grease and just, you know, any kind of stuff. You can always see like here some of the grease, how dried it gets. So, it, I mean, it's not a bad thing even just to do this and, and you know, clean your stuff up. There's one of the pieces that we took out. And then this was our little area here. Um, I typically like to work on a workbench, but that day we were up at the shop and, you know, we were just trying to get stuff done and I was kind of keeping things um, as organized as I could. The rag joint often has to be rebuilt or you could replace it. Uh, mine was in very, very good condition. Like I couldn't believe how good a condition it was. So of course we left that. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the, the gear shifter um, lever uh, removed. And, um, yeah, you can just see some of the tools and whatnot that you have to use. Uh, if you look back here, you have to have one of these tools here. I forget what they're called, where you put the two pins in and you squeeze it and it takes that off. And the reason why I thought of that is you can see that the tool right here. Now, um, I do want to show you since th this kind of ties in, of course, you can see everything is removed here. And there's no rag joint. The steering box is not on. Um, this, you'll see a better photo in a minute. This is the um, the coupler when it's installed. You basically just tap it so that it's flush with, with this right here. The thing is, when you first get in the car and you're going to leave all this disconnected, when you first start to turn your wheel, it's not going to feel right. It's going to feel like, wow, there is something's not right. What you have to end up doing, and I'm going to jump ahead here, is you need to get in the car, and I spent like 20, 25 minutes taking, I put my finger right here, and basically just spinning the wheel one way, one way, one way, turn it back the other way. There's no rhyme or reason. You just need to spend some time, and what it's going to do is that shaft has to um, kind of work its way in a little bit because now it's got this really tight coupler there. So again, in the beginning, Trust me, I was like, Tony, man, this is really, really, really like tighter than I thought. And he said, hey, man, listen, you got to do it and it's it's going to be fine. And obviously you keep spinning this wheel and what will end up happening is it'll be it, it, it'll be better than what it was when you started taking it apart. There's going to be no play in this thing at all. So when you go to shift, um, you know, your gear into like you know, drive, uh, you're going to tell like how stout it feels. It, it, it's, it's a lot better than, than what you're dealing with in your car potentially now. The other side of it is if you look back here at these photos, um, this little deal here, and this is the, the part of the issue. Basically when this gets really loose, this will drop 
and it it basically kicks it into reverse. So this little piece here, what I did is I hit it on the wire um, brush and I kind of just cleaned it up. But there is a bushing in here. You have to go to Lincoln Land typically uh, is where I would refer people to go. And you want to buy this little bushing deal. And that's what we're going to look at now. So you can imagine with me having all this apart, I wanted everything to be clean and new. So you end up getting this and then you've got this little guy and you have your washer here. And that goes on that side. This is also important. Um I guess hypothetically, you know, if your bushing was also gone or very, very, uh, you know, worn out, that could potentially also cause an issue as well. So obviously, if you're going to rebuild your column and do this and put the work in, you're going to want to make sure um, you change this piece as well. You can see again what I did. This got a little bit marred up. Um, but I, I basically cleaned it on the wire brush and I painted all this black. I think I went in at the, at the end and just uh, touched this up. Um, this this is the gear shift arm, and um, when you are clicking this through the gears, that's what you know comes down here, and you have to have it hooked up to your linkage. You just take photos of it when you take it apart. It's not that hard. But uh, what I did is I hit this on the wire brush as well on the 64 and uh, cleaned it up. Typically, I would have painted it, but it looked good kind of the way um, it was, and I just left it. Here you can see the washer I mentioned a minute ago, and then you've got the cotter pin that kind of goes in, and um, that is basically how that goes right there. What I want to do is kind of show the money shot here. Um, I think what I did that day is I took a, a spare part that we had, and I, I put it in here. No, actually, I, I take that back. I take that back. Uh, this was a split split photo I did. This is how it looked whenever I was at my house and I had started blowing stuff apart. The engine was out and I was able to get a good, good photo. What I wanted to kind of show here is, one, how much nicer it looks, right, with this. Um, obviously cleaning all this up. Um, and then I did – I think I got all of the, the linkage powder coated. But um, uh, you can even see here this little channel – where the all the wires kind of rest on the lower firewall. I even took all this off and had it powder coated. They've got these little tabs that will break over time, and you kind of push those down. Um, I didn't break too many, and that kind of holds the wiring. I mean, that was just kind of the level of effort that I wanted to go through. You know, you see this little bit of kind of surface rust. There was nothing bad or horrible here. Um, it just was your normal, normal stuff. So... The key thing is here, you want to take the steering column out or have someone that knows what they're doing take it out. Uh, Tony Boss Bowling can rebuild it. Um, if need be, um, you can buy, call Lincoln Land. You can, if you don't want to do the coupler, you can buy the little um, black piece here that I showed you earlier. You just tell them what you need. You can also buy this here as well, this little setup, and that will ensure that you got what you need. This was when the steering column was back in. I can't remember if the rag joint was hooked up already. But before you hook everything up in the engine bay, what you can do, again, is you come in here and you spin the wheel a bunch. And you'll feel over the course of that 10, 15 minutes of just kind of going back and forth, it'll it'll become very, very smooth again. And, uh, again, you, you'll notice right away how nice the, the steering is. Um, here you can see, and the shifting in general. Um, here you can see kind of just the difference between with the column in and column out. Um, there is, I didn't mention earlier, there is this big kind of brace that goes across and, and that's going to be kind of taken down. But once you get underneath the car, um, you know, and you get underneath the dash, I should say, uh, you start to kind of realize, hey, there's a couple bolts here. I'm going to take those out. Don't let these interiors scare you. You know, I'm not one to want to maybe take off, the, take out the entire dash in these years. Um, but once you get to this point, you know, here, it's not too, too bad. You just got to take your time and just know that it's, it's worth the effort. So those are a few photos, um, just talking about the issue in general, where the car can jump into reverse. And again, on the 67, it's the same as the 64, you know, these are going to look the same in terms of that spacing in there. Um, the coupler I'll have to look up. Uh, the size, again, I know Nathan Wilson has posted it in the past, so I want to give a huge shout-out to him, as I did earlier. 
and just know once you get all this done, your car is going to, when you put your hand on that shift lever and you shift it, you're going to be able to tell how much nicer it is. And then your steering wheel, after you grease that coupler up and you spin that thing a whole bunch, it's going to wear in perfect right where it needs to be and you'll be set to go. So I think that's it. ODB, the Lincoln Addict, share this with your friends if you can. I know some people share it in the Suicide Slabs group. Um, I'll start a thread in uh, Lincoln Addict Facebook group uh, if you want to check it out there as well uh, in some of the comments. So stay on the rise. Check out LincolnAddict.com. Appreciate your time. Peace.